You're listening to episode 670 of the Father Bills Podcast. Welcome back. This week's episode is entitled, Let Go, given on the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, 2018. There's a story that is simply titled The Rope, and it goes like this. It begins with a mountain climber who wanted to climb the highest mountain. Since he wanted the glory for himself, he decided to climb the mountain alone. So he climbed and climbed until it was late at night. As he hastened to climb up to the summit, he suddenly slipped and fell off the edge. Great fear seized him as his life flashed before him. As he kept falling towards his death, suddenly he felt the rope that was tied to his waist pull very hard, and he was hanging in the air with only the rope holding him. And in desperation, he cried out, Help me, God! Help me! Suddenly in that darkness, A voice came from the skies. How do you want me to help you? The man quickly answered, Save me, God, save me. The voice said, Do you really believe that I can save you? The man answered, Yes, yes, I believe, I believe. The voice said, Then do as I tell you. Cut away the rope that is tied to your waist. There was a moment of silence. The man decided to hold on to the rope with all his might. The next day, the rescue team saw an intriguing sight. The climber was found dead and frozen, his body hanging from a rope with his hands holding it tight. His body was only a few feet from the ground. Indeed, letting go is hard to do, but it is in letting go that we are freed. In letting go, we can become more open to God's plans for us and enjoy the gift we call life. Where are you unwilling to let go such that God can help you? Where are you holding on to something that is keeping you from following Christ? What profound fear do you hold on to in your heart? Where are you holding on to something that is ruining your relationships with God and your loved ones? Where are you lacking in trust? Today we heard about the two women of antiquity who gave greatly of themselves, had almost nothing. They trusted still. And we remember them now thousands of years since. They gave not from their surplus, they gave from their sustenance. They made sacrifices. Their faith is what motivated them to do so, to be so generous. Their faith allowed them to give and let go. Sometimes things we hold on to can ruin our relationships. I can recall as a young adult always demanding to drive my car when we went with some of my friends out somewhere. Fortunately, I had good friends, one of which asked me why it was so important. Why did I insist on driving all the time? I realized that it was a control thing. By letting go of that need, I became a better friend and stopped trying to control everything. I realized, in part, that by letting go, I became less self-centered and enjoyed just being 
along with my friends for the adventure. I also noticed that I could see the things that were around me when I was not driving, but riding in the car. You ever notice that there's things going by you? To this day, I enjoy riding as well as driving. I'm very thankful for having such good friends. Just this last weekend, or beginning of this weekend, I was asked to meet at Elmer's. It's a good place to go. I could just put my car in neutral and just coast there. It's like autopilot. But I didn't. I asked them, hey, would you mind come picking me up on your way over? I would have never done that had my friends not asked me that question decades ago. They challenged me. They challenged me to let go of control. And it has built up many relationships because of it. Another story, about a year ago, my then 92-year-old mother finally had to admit that she was not competent enough to drive her own car. Her physical responsiveness was not very good. She has a walker. She can barely get from one side of the house from the other without having to take pit stops. Her eyesight is going, and her hearing is very diminished. This act helped our entire family for we were very worried that she would hurt or kill someone or herself. It took true humility to admit her diminishing abilities. But by her letting go, we, her children, saw an example. And it enabled us to help be her driver, her chauffeur, driving her around. Now her outings are more of a family building thing instead of just her going from place to place. I'm happy to shuttle her around when I'm able to come visit. She asks, what do you want to do, Bill? I'm going, what do you want to do? Let's go do something that you need to do. I'll drive you there. It'll be fun. Now, each of us siblings are building up memories of taking our mother out to her favorite places like the Basilica of St. Costco. When I go to Costco, I usually call her myself. I'm in Bedford. Hey, Mom, I'm at your favorite place. Where's that, honey? Oh, you know. These are precious moments with my mother. I think these will be my favorite memories when she finally passes into eternity, me driving her to Costco. But this was only possible because she decided to let go. This church building has been an example of letting go. It's only been due to God's grace, our blood, sweat, and tears, and a fair amount of saying, not my will, but your will be done. Ask anyone who was part of the many committees over the past five years, and they will probably tell you so, some stories about how we had strong opinions about this or that, and yet, we had to let some of them go for the greater good. The good for ourselves, our communion, and the good of the church, the greater communion. I must say that I have had to give up many things on my side of what I think we should do to let God's people do what needs to be done. And we still have things to work out in the church. I mean, we still have the sound system to work out. We're still working on that. We have our screen above here that needs to be uh, reinstalled. There's going to be things. Stations of the cross have to be put up. Will you let all that neediness go and just kind of bumble with us as we put it all together? You know you're going to be a lot happier if you do. If we can let go of our control issues, now that we're settling in, it's kind of like rebuilding the church after rebuilding the church. We will no longer, if we are, being demanding consumers. I want this way and I want it that way. Rather, we'll be stewards, knowing that this church is sheer gift. And so that we walk into it in awe. 
not critique. So here's some homework. I have two things. First, ask yourself some questions. Number two, make a resolution with God. So here's some questions just to kind of rev up the question machine in your mind. Think about where you are demanding, where you needed to have control. Where is such control creating hardships or arguments in your family or friends? How is it paralyzing you or making you feel trapped? Where is such neediness disturbing your peace? Where have you made a mountain out of a molehill? Where have you refused to serve because of some resentment or hurt and you won't let it go? So there's some questions. You might have your own. So that number two, making a resolution with God. How about making a decision starting now to let go of those control issues? How about asking God to help you let go? Honestly, if you couldn't do it now, you won't be able to do it later. And so it's clearly you need God. There's too many things that are beyond our own ability. And only with God can it be made possible. So instead of, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, how about, I'm going to let go and let God work in me. So let go of the need for control. Allow others to serve. Serve you sometime. Let go of the things that hold you captive. Choose to cooperate with joy and drop the critical heart. Give others the chance to sacrifice their time. Replace any grumbling and demanding you hold in your heart with the serenity and the stewardship which God has given us all. Not everyone will give the same gifts or the same amount or time, whatever it might be. Let go of any comparisons then. Let go of any self-critique I can't do as much as someone else. Or I'm not worthy. Yeah, we're all not worthy. I'm not worthy. But God is worthy. Let him in. Let him be your hands and feet. Let him motivate you to do the right thing. See, if we all sacrifice and give of our hearts with no strings attached, that's always a hard one, if we let go and give with the faith that these two women in the scriptures we heard from today, if we're like them, remember, we're proclaiming them today. That's thousands of years ago. If we could be like them, then God can work in our hearts and make us the best versions of ourselves. You might be surprised that your hidden fears are imaginary, that your deepest, darkest fear won't actually happen. Don't be like that man in this story who dangled just right near the, the ground itself, but out of fear, holding on to the impossible. Don't be like him. Let go of the rope that binds you. God will catch you. Remember, he is the Savior. When... Then, then watch now, then, if you choose any of these things, watch how much greater God's grace abounds in your life. Begin that process today. When you come forward for communion, bring your rope, your control issues, your demands, your resentments, the little strings that you attach to promises and make a holy exchange with Christ. Christ, who is present in the Eucharist. Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. And let him take on all of those things. Let go. He wants you to be the person he's calling you to be. And you will enjoy it too, because you'll be more loving, caring, merciful, open, 
and compassionate. Let go. And may God bless us all. Thank you again for listening to this episode of the Father Bill's Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, just go to my website, fatherbill.org, F-R-B-I-L-L.org, and there you can see what's going on in my social media accounts. Um, And also take take a look at other spots on the website. There's a a liturgy page, there's some photos I've taken, and a, a blog as well. So check that out and let me know. On the front page, there's the ability to just email me as well. And until next time, may God bless you and have a great week. Bye-bye.